is 20-year-old Tanisha Hammonds with her eight-month-old son. Two days before Christmas Day of 2018, her life came to a brutal end while she was recording a Facebook Live video. But Tanisha's death stood at the end of a long list of tragic tit-for-tats. In a hopeful scenario, her shocking death was a wake-up call for the rough Bloomfield crowds. In a more pessimistic scenario, it was another victim of an endless, senseless war. Tanisha never got to see her baby grow up, and she was not the only one in her family whose life was cut short in a brutal, senseless way. And yet, after her death, people seemed more interested in her last Facebook Live than in her poor, grieving family. So why did Tanisha die? And what are all of the events that led to her untimely demise? This is the full story of Tanisha Hammonds. Today's story, you guys, takes us to Macon, Georgia, home to the Allman Brothers Band, tons of historic architecture, and amazing natural sceneries, Macon seems to have it all. But lately, Macon has also seen a rise in poverty and crime that makes it a less desirable place to move and start a family. According to Crime Grade, Macon has a crime rating of D minus. This means 89% of cities in the United States are safer than Macon, and only 11% of cities are more dangerous. Tanisha Hammonds was used to violence and crime since she was a baby. Tanisha was born on October 10th, 1998 to her mom, Rhonda, and an unnamed father. They grew up in the Bloomfield area, which is known for a particularly high crime rate. However, Tanisha always worked hard to stay out of trouble and pursue a happy, peaceful life. In March, 2018, she had a son, Amari. Her Facebook was filled with pictures of her baby boy, and she was ecstatic about being a mom. She was also pretty excited about social media. Dang, man, I hate that little Philip Teeny minute, man. I gave him a little laugh, though. He gonna be good tonight. He finna go think about me. <laughs> Myself and I got myself in time is money. I need that money. Got no time for no friends. She regularly posts and let all of her loved ones know what she was up to or what Amari had done that day. It was her way of connecting with all of her friends at the same time. But Tanisha liked going out too. She might have been a mom, but she was 20 years old and she was still down to party every now and then. So on December 23rd, 2018, Tanisha met up with a few old friends and went out to have drinks. But Tanisha never made at home that night. Tanisha's death was brutal, sudden, and shocking to everyone who knew her. She had no enemies, had never been involved in gangs, and was incredibly dedicated to raising her son. She would never put herself in harm's way, not with an eight-month-old to care for. However, there is a reason for her death, as outrageous as it is, and we have to trace back several steps to understand the full context that led to this tragic ending. Tanisha was very close to her mother, but she was even closer to her mother's sister, Bridget Flowers. Bridget was her aunt, but also her best friend, confidant, and the person Tanisha would call in case of an emergency. The two displayed their love for each other on social media. Tanisha also felt embarrassed by the many pictures her aunt posted of her, especially during her teenage years. Like when Bridget posted this picture of Tanisha, she commented, Jess blowed me. Delete this ugly sh and her aunt replied, you took it, you can't be ugly because you look like me. You know how family dynamics go. Still, they were the best of friends and nothing could keep them apart. In fact, Tanisha spent most of her childhood living with Bridget and her two twin sons, Jay Sean and Jamon Jackson. They were born in 2000, making them two years Tanisha's juniors. Growing up, Tanisha's cousins were happy-go-lucky, rowdy, and kind-hearted. They were exactly what you'd expect from two young brothers. Bridget was super proud of them. She was also in love with her husband, the boy's stepfather. Sometimes she would tell Facebook about her love for them. God, my kids, my hubby, then me, in that order. Bridget would also write about how much she missed her husband when he wasn't there. At first glance, it looked like the perfect love story. I miss my husband, feeling some type of way this morning. But those who knew Bridget, her undying loyalty to him was worrying. Jacinto Flowers was a with Bridget in almost every way you can imagine. He would beat her, insult her, and be extremely jealous and possessive of her. She wasn't allowed to do anything but him. Well, that's when the double standards begin. He would be going out at night, doing God knows what, and Bridget hardly ever knew what he was up to. As it turns out, he was deeply involved in the drug trade. He was in and out of prison 18 times on drugs 
and petty crime charges. So when Bridget said she missed him, he was either in prison or doing sketchy deals. And when he was at home, they would constantly fight. And while you can imagine how he would treat his stepsons too. He could not regulate his emotions, nor was he a responsible figure that the boys could look up to. In fact, he was one of the most unstable types of parents out there. Sadly, the negative effects of his character on Jayshon and Jaman would be felt later on. Nevertheless, Bridget supported and even loved her husband, no matter how many times he would mistreat her or her kids. Well, even she had a limit. So in late 2013 or early 2014, Bridget put an end to her marriage. Guys, I know this is not your first true crime case, so I bet you know how this ends. Jacinto, being the violent, possessive person he was, would not leave Bridget alone. He wanted her back at any cost. He even threatened to take her life, then his, if she didn't take him back. Wait, what sane person would accept going back into a relationship with someone who threatens to kill them? Of course, Bridget didn't want anything to do with him anymore. In fact, she was scared for her life and for her twin sons. On February 14th, 2014, Bridget went out to shop at Walmart. Out of nowhere, Jacinto appeared and punched her so hard she lost consciousness. He was not phased by this. He just left her on the floor and exited the store in front of several shocked bystanders and a CCTV camera. Jacinto didn't seem to have any regard for Bridget's life anymore or for his freedom. After all, he'd been in prison so many times, he probably didn't care if he ended up arrested again. And arrested he was. But here's an absurd twist. After seven days in jail, Jacinto was released. Wait a minute, what? Jacinto had a horrible criminal record. There were also accounts of gruesome physical toward his wife, and now there was this Walmart incident. Was no one at the police preoccupied that Jacinto would attack his ex-wife again if they released him? He was erratic, a violent man who showed no remorse at his arrest. It's pretty crazy that he only spent one week in jail, and it's pretty heartbreaking too, considering what happens next. On February 22nd, 2014, Bridget, her mother, her sister, and their friend had a cookout at Bridget's house. Late in the evening, they wanted some more drinks to keep the party going. Bridget went to get the drinks at the nearby liquor store, but on her way back, she decided to drop off her friend at her place. They were still in her driveway when Bridget's friend started arguing with her boyfriend. Lo and behold, Jacinto appeared. Now he appeared concerned about the couple's fight, so he walked closer to the car to ask what was going on. A second later, Jacinto seemed to distance himself from the fight. He took a step back, pulled out his gun, and shot Bridget in the face. She died on the spot in front of all of her friends and family. Her poor sons would find out about this in just a few hours. Jacinto was arrested that night. Some people couldn't believe that he'd kill Bridget less than 24 hours after his release. Other people couldn't believe he was released in the first place. Sickeningly, he showed zero remorse again. In fact, he seemed pretty proud of his deed. Just look at his face during the trial. This is the expression he gave Bridget's family. This is how much he cared for his wife, the wife that stood by him and gushed over him on Facebook for years on end. Jacinto will spend the rest of his life behind bars, but his horrible legacy left many holes in the family. You know, once you get tired, you're tired, you know, and she was tired of it. She was like, well, I'm done with you. But I still don't know from this day to that one what will possess you to just kill somebody you say you love so much. And in a dark and disturbing way, he started the domino effect that ended with Tanisha Hammond's death. Tanisha was devastated to hear about her aunt's death. It was so infuriating too. She had tried so hard to get away from his toxic behavior and the police didn't help with the situation at all. She wrote on Facebook, I lost my auntie and that sh up my family. Used to see her every day and now we say RIP. Fuck that because he knows he took part of me. I close my eyes to go to sleep and see him in my dreams. Hard for my grandmother to keep her head up. We see him in court and he smiled at her. How TF you live with some shit like that? Especially when you said you loved her and had her back. But it's a cold 
Rabbit's world and them big facts. I can't blame you though. I knew you was a rat. Exactly. How can you say you love someone and then take their life when they ask you to set them free? A few years later, Bridget's family started a lawsuit against the Bibb County Sheriff's Office, stating Jacinto should have never been granted bail after seven days. They had all the information they needed about his history. They could have made an informed choice and kept him locked up. And then there were Jay Sean and Jamon. The twins had had Jacinto as their dad for most of their lives. They'd learned to trust him and look up to him, even when he was at his lowest. Now he'd taken their mother away in such a brutal way, and they were only 14 years old when it happened. It's unknown how much they showed or expressed their grief. What is known, however, is the way they acted it out. Jay Sean and Jamon went off to live with their grandmother, but at the same time, they joined a terrifying gang in the Bloomfield area. Now they would occupy most of their time getting into fights with rival gangs. And it would be one fight at Northeast High School that would have a tragic butterfly effect on their entire family. When they were 18, Jay Sean and Jamon had started a feud with 16 year old Kendrick Davis. Jamon had seen Kendrick streaming on Facebook Live. He was bragging about firing his gun at the houses of Jamon's friends. Jamon was so angered by this, he wanted to get his revenge. And you know how gang violence often escalates senselessly from a nasty word to murder in broad daylight. It really shouldn't be like this. But when there are angry hormonal teenagers and guns involved, it can end up really bad. So Jamon called on his friends and cousins to confront Kendrick. Kendrick and his gang were ready too. He knew a fight was coming, so he'd rallied up his boys as well. One day, the gang set a time and a place to settle their beef after school. But there were dozens of teens involved and some were more violent than others. Some threw punches, others threw rocks, and then someone pulled out a gun. Kendrick Davis died that night. Imagine the pain his family felt. He was only 16. He hadn't even finished school or had a proper relationship. However, Jay Sean and Jamon felt nothing. Shocking, I know. Somehow Jamon wasn't affected by seeing his rival dying in front of him. If anything, he wanted to exert more revenge on his gang. Was his grief so terrible and so unprocessed that this was the only way he could cope with it? A few days after Kendrick's death, the twins Twins and their gang went to Kendrick's house to do a drive-by shooting. Kendrick was gone, but his mother was there. Imagine what this did to her after she'd already lost her son. Jamon and three boys from his crew were arrested that night. They were charged with homicide and sent to prison for a long time. But the tit for tat doesn't stop there. Jamon had really poked the tiger coming to Kendrick's home after he'd already been killed. His friends were now out for blood. There was still Jay Sean to punish and several other gang members. And so, our our story finally comes back to Tanisha. On December 23rd, 2018, Tanisha was out with Jay Sean and three other friends. Tanisha was driving while Jay Sean was seated next to her and streaming live on Facebook. Tanisha appeared on the Facebook Live chatting and making jokes. It's unknown just how many people were watching this video in real time, but sadly, they witnessed Tanisha get killed that night. The car then crashed and Jay Sean's phone fell to the floorboard. People could be heard screaming, crying, and trying to call 911. Heartbreakingly, Tanisha bled out in front of her loved ones within a matter of seconds. By the time the paramedics arrived, it was already too late to save her life. She was pronounced here. Uh, behind us here at 8.50. Tanisha was killed by a member of the twins' rival gang. He mistook Tanisha for Jay Sean. Poor Tanisha had been surrounded by gang violence since a very young age. There are rumors of her father being involved in some illegal business, and her brother Demarcus was part of the twins' gang and was arrested after the drive-by shooting. Then there was Jacinto and Bridget's tragic death. And yet, she had steered clear of gangs and drugs throughout her whole life. Now, she was a mother. She wanted wanted nothing else than to love her son and to see him grow up. Tanisha was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, in a world filled with vengeful, violent people. Just like Jay Sean and Jamon once had to do, baby Amari would go on to live with his grandmother. He will never remember his mother. He was only eight months old at the time of Tanisha's murder. But this is not the end of Tanisha Hammond's story, because what happened next was another proof that we live in a messed up world. News of Tanisha's death and the haunting Facebook Live video made headlines throughout the country. This sparked the old conversation about gun violence. It was a particularly relevant conversation for the communities of Macon and Bloomfield. 
In 2018 alone, 40 people lost their lives to homicide by gun in that neighborhood. Tanisha was the 40th. However, this was, as always, a conversation. Nothing was done to make Bloomfield safer, and nothing was done to bring Tanisha's killer to justice. You heard right. Jay Sean went to the police that night to tell them the whole story of their gang feud. He said he was certain it was someone from Kendrick's crew that offed Tanisha in an attempt to kill him. The police made a list of potential names and promised to follow up. However, there was no hard evidence linking anyone to Tanisha's death. So the case went cold and no one was ever arrested for it. Even after Kendrick's crew did a drive-by shooting of Tanisha's mother's house, the police didn't get involved. I know, disgusting. Tanisha's poor mother lived in fear for her life too. When she was contacted by the media for comments, Rhonda said she couldn't show her face on camera. They also declined to speak on camera saying they were fearful for their own safety since the killer could still be on the loose. Other people in the neighborhood were just as secretive. They even feared that ratting the killer out to the police could get them a death warrant. Some parents refused to let their kids out to play anymore. It's sad, you know what I'm saying? Cause they want to come out and play, but it's just too dangerous now right now these days. Sadly, people's fear only worked in the killer's favor. Eventually, Rhonda converted her daughter's Facebook page to a memorial page. Three years after Tanisha's death, Rhonda wrote, Three years ago, I got the worst news a mother could receive. You were gone. My best friend, my oldest child was gone. It seems like it was yesterday. And I have to ask God why so many times. You don't supposed to do that. He needed you more, I guess. Rest on, baby girl. As if the lack of justice for Tanisha wasn't messed up enough, here's another cut to the story. A young mother shot to death just days before Christmas. The whole thing caught on camera and that video somehow made its way online and racked up more than 200,000 views. Yep, instead of remembering Tanisha for the bright, kind person she was, or instead of supporting her family through this horrible time, people seemed much more into finding the video of her death. Facebook soon took the horrifying video off the website. But you know how when you post something online, it doesn't really disappear with a simple delete? People can download it before you delete it, and before you know it, the video resurfaces on the dark web. Soon after Tanisha's murder, a website called Fly Height uploaded the terrifying Facebook Live video. Millions of people watched the video over and over again. That morbid curiosity prevailed over her family's repeated pleas to delete the video. You emailed flyhide.com and said, You know, once it's on the internet, it's out there. But I'm like, much damage control y'all could do, please. Please take it down. Tanisha's would-be sister-in-law, Sarah McMiller, explained she tried hard to take the video down, but it kept popping up on various shady websites. Her biggest concern was Tanisha's baby son growing up to see the gruesome way his mother died. Amari's not gonna be a baby for ever. <laughs> Her son's gonna have a social media one day. I would hate for him to come across that video. If you have a heart, take it down. Thank you for a child. If you if if nobody if you won't take it down for anybody else, think of her mother and her child. It's really sad to watch how more people go for the immediate satisfaction of watching something this dark and brutal rather than respecting a grieving family's pleas. Also, is there that much satisfaction in watching someone get killed on camera? If I were you, I wouldn't go looking for things like this online. There's no good that can come out of seeing real life violence. Thankfully, Fly Height took the video down some months later. Isn't it super scary that? a video you don't want online could make its way to so many websites? According to an expert in online safety, if you're the one who recorded that video, you're its rightful owner. So you can ask any website to take it down. So you could absolutely go to a website and say, I have copyright in this particular video. There is a copy of that video located on your website. I'm the copyright owner and I want it taken down. But what if it's a video of you, not recorded by you? This was the tricky case of Tanisha Hammonds. She was not around anymore and the video had been recorded on Jay Sean's phone. Tanisha's Facebook Live craze seems to be over, but for Tanisha's family, the story is far from over. First and foremost, they want justice for her. Exactly. How can you move on and heal your wounds when nothing was done to arrest your loved one's killer? This is one of the things that makes Tanisha's death so tragic. The other factor is the incredibly complicated sequence of events that led to her murder. There wasn't just one person responsible. From the inherited trauma of living in a rough neighborhood to Jacinto, 
several people can be held accountable for Tanisha's death. Jacinto was a terrible role model for Jayshawn and Jamon. Then he killed their mother. He left a huge hole in their lives and pushed them to a violent lifestyle where they could channel their repressed anger. Then the twins escalated a feud until it ended with murder. Then they escalated it some more and it was Tanisha who paid with her life. Will this tragic death act as a wake-up call for the Bloomfield teens involved in gangs? Is this enough to get people thinking or make them feel remorse for their violent style? Or is Tanisha just one short chapter in an endless book of gun violence and gang feuds? Will they ever come to an end? Hey guys, thanks for watching. What do you think about this case? Do you know of other similar cases? And is there a way to prevent tragic deaths like Tanisha's from happening? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And before you go, don't forget forget to like and subscribe. See you next time and stay safe.